This is the English Weekly Podcast brought to you by 9.0 Niner English Review and Tutorial Center, the number one test preparation center for all of your high stakes English tests. The salary in Australia and New Zealand can hit up to 200,000 pesos and all you need to do is to prepare for your English exam. It's not just about knowing which sections are included. It can be different for every type of examination. And did I say feedback is important? All right, so uh, what's the secret? <laughs> the secret is, hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode of 9.09ers English Weekly Podcast. I'm still your host, Brian, and in today's session, we're going to talk about some tips or some strategies that you can utilize to help you to wing your IELTS, OET, TOEFL, uh, CELPIP, MET, or any other English examination for that matter. So if you're excited, I'm excited. Let's get started with this. But before I jump into the different tips to help you wing your examinations, I'd like to actually highlight some of the reasons why you should choose to uh, take an English examination this 2024 in particular. First, do you know that Canada is looking for occupants, for migrants from different countries? All professions may apply as long as they have a minimum of one year work experience. So whether you are a skilled trade worker or a professional, you can go ahead and apply to Canada as an immigrant. Just make sure that you have the minimum one year requirement and of course your English examination. And for Canada, usually they accept either the IELTS or CELPIP. And also, did you know that Australia and New Zealand are countries that offer some of the highest salaries in the world and they require only an English examination from you and all of your other credentials so you can get started with your application. In fact, for your information, the salary in Australia and New Zealand can hit up to 200,000 pesos when converted to Philippine currency per month for various types of professionals. So if you're actually looking into getting more out of the time that you're spending at work, then Australia and New Zealand are perfect destinations. And all you need to do is to prepare for your English exam, take it, ace your English examination, and kickstart your application to Australia or New Zealand. But wait, there's more. The USA and UK, as well as Ireland, are looking for nurses or medical technologists, uh, physical therapists, occupational therapists, uh, radiologic uh, technologists, and all of the other healthcare professionals. And what they do is they recruit people, all expenses paid. So you don't need to shell out anything because the employer pays for just about anything. So if you're on a tight budget, you don't have money to show, or you can't actually afford to spend so much money in the application process, then the USA, the UK, and Ireland are very good destinations, especially if you're a healthcare professional, because everything is paid for uh, when you apply to these countries. And all you need, again, is an English examination to get your application started. Um, and make sure that you get the target requirements for each one of these each one of these countries because they have different score requirements per country. Finally, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, uh, and the UK are looking for international students. So if you want to go that route and um, you don't have work experience or you are already a bit over age, you can still apply to go abroad because um, these countries that I've mentioned are actually accepting students. There's no age limit for that, and as well as no requirement for any work experience whatsoever connected to your degree or profession. And again, these are just some of the reasons why you should choose to take an English examination this year, especially if you want to kickstart your application to go overseas. If you want to go abroad and change your life for the better, then, of course, the most logical option is to take an English examination and get started with your um, application. But 
Um, when you're preparing for an English examination, it could be very tiring. It could be very draining. It can be depressing, especially if you don't know what you're doing. And that's where 9.09 or enters the picture. We have unlimited lectures, one-on-one -on -one tutorials, and recorded videos for when you can't attend the live sessions so that you would be able to equip yourselves with the competency you need to ace your English exams. And uh, speaking of acing your English examinations, I'm going to share with you just a few tips that will help you to actually optimize the test performance that you will have on test day. And I would like to start first with understanding the test format because every test is different. They have a different format per exam. And uh, when you're taking one examination, it doesn't necessarily mean you can actually take another and succeed. You can pass in one and fail um, ultimately on another. So it is very important that you understand the test format. Um, and when we say test format, we are talking about the listening, the reading, the writing, and the speaking components. Each of the sections of the test will test a specific language skill. And it can be different for every type of examination. For instance, in the reading examination of the IELTS, you will actually have a general passage. But when you're taking the um, OET, for example, you will be reading instead a passage that is not too general, but instead profession specific, something that will probably encompass the kinds of uh, things that you will experience or be exposed to when you're living abroad and working as a healthcare professional. So in that regard, it is um, quite important to know which sections are going to be included in your examination. And you should also understand the test types or the types of items that you're going to face. Will there be a multiple choice question? Is it more of a short answer question or matching? Do you have an essay writing test or a letter writing examination? Each question demands a different approach or each question type will demand a different approach. And it's not just about knowing which sections are included, like, oh, I know this as listening, reading, writing, and speaking. You also equally need to understand how these are going to be delivered on test day. So there will be no panic factor, like, you know what you're going to expect when you take these exams, okay? Another thing that you want to consider uh, regarding test format will be the timing, like how much time are, are you going to spend for listening, for reading, for writing, for speaking, so that you can anticipate on test day how much effort you're going to exert so as to finish your examination on time. Because trust me on this, there's so many candidates who are very capable and who are likely to get a good result. But because of time constraint, they don't get to finish their exams. And as a result, they get very low scores. So that's another one that you'd want to consider when you're taking an English examination. I definitely would encourage you to research, to gather as much information as you can about the specific types of tests that you will be taking, and to try to look at official papers like you know the uh, sample tests that are being released by the different institutions that facilitate the examination, that would be a very good springboard to get familiar with the test format. But I would definitely, definitely advise you to seek the assistance of experts if you are a little bit confused. Don't just attempt to prepare by yourself if you're having some difficulty because the tests that we're talking about here are not actually cheap. They're kind of expensive. They can cost up to more than 10,000 bucks. And because of that, you would want to make sure you're well prepared when you take these exams so that you won't waste your money. And here's a secret, um, and probably the secret to how I got a 9 or the perfect score in all of the components of the IELTS and a 90 over 90 or a perfect score as well in all of the components of the PTE. All right, so uh, what's the secret? <laughs> the secret is um, 
to actually study the band score criteria or to study how you're going to be scored in the test and make sure that everything you do complies with the criteria that you're provided. This you would actually learn from your teachers, especially here at 9.09. We emphasize the importance of understanding the band score criteria so that you would know how to approach the questions in the test and comply with all of those requirements. That's super important because you don't need to be the most talented. You don't need to be the most intelligent. You just need to be the most strategic candidate when you're taking an English examination. Here's tip number two. I know Filipinos don't like reading, but tip number two is to improve your reading comprehension because it is essential in your examination. Comprehension is super important when you're taking an English examination, particularly when you're taking the reading test. And this skill is not just about understanding the words, but also the context. Like you should learn how to interpret or to analyze or to draw conclusions out of the text that you're reading. It's not just understanding all of the word combinations and all that. You need to be able to understand and comprehend what message the author has um, and what message he or she wants to convey to you. So um, this doesn't necessarily mean reading novels. You have to diversify your reading materials. For example, you could read novels, newspapers, and academic papers like scientific articles and even essays. Or if you're a little bit lazy, you can just go and scroll on Facebook, try to look for different articles there that you can read that might interest you. And this kind of variety exposes you to different writing styles, to different vocabulary, and um, also gets you to read much faster. That's super important when you're taking an English exam. You need to read fast because you're constrained by time. You don't really have all day or all week to read all of the passages in your test. Usually you have one hour or less, okay? Uh, in certain exams as well, you need to summarize information. So try to uh, make it a habit to summarize things that you're reading. So if you're reading an article, for example, or an essay, try to give a one sentence or two sentence or three sentence summary about what you have read, because there are certain exams like in the PTE in which you're going to be required to do that, okay? And um, another crucial aspect when it comes to reading comprehension is your vocabulary. So while you're reading, improve your vocabulary by listing down certain words or phrases that you feel resonate well with you, but uh, you don't really know yet. And that's going to help to improve your vocabulary. And at the same time, if you ever encounter words that you don't have any idea about, instead of consulting a dictionary, practice finding the context clues in that paragraph and context clues are the ones that are going to give you the definition of that word based off the usage in that particular paragraph or sentence. That's very helpful because when you're taking an English examination, you can't carry with you a dictionary or your mobile phone to search the meanings of the words that you're going to see. Okay, so that's tip number two improve your reading comprehension. Now, I won't waste time here and jump right into probably my favorite examination when you're taking any English examination, which is your writing test. So to enhance your writing skills, it is actually important to um, improve your coherence, not your creativity. It's important to improve the clarity of the message rather than your creativity. Or it's not important to use verbose terminologies or impressive words or idiomatic expressions. The most important or the most vital thing that you should prioritize when you're writing is definitely the clarity of the message that you'd want to convey. So in essay writing, in summaries, or even when you're preparing uh, a letter, the clarity of the message is of utmost importance when you're taking an English exam. And this is what I've um, actually learned over time teaching various English examinations. Examiners wouldn't mind 
if I'm sorry, wouldn't care at all um, if you're using idiomatic expressions or big words or expressive terminologies um, in your writing pieces. Examiners would be more interested to know whether they'd be able to understand what you are writing in your letter, in your essay, or in your report. Okay. Also, apart from that, it is very important to have a structure because this is an exam. I mean, it is not uh, required that you use a particular format or an ideal structure when you're taking an English exam. However, you don't really have a lot of time, so you have to develop a strategic structure. A well-structured essay or a well-structured report usually has a clear introduction and um, the clear specific details or the body paragraphs. And um, especially for essays, you need to write the conclusion, okay? Um, and uh, the components or the different things that you're going to be able to see in those different parts of the test will vary depending on the test that you're taking. Again, in compliance with the requirements of the tests that you're taking, right? So that you would definitely learn when you attend lessons at 9.09 or because we are uh, advocates of using the correct structure when you're taking the examination to expedite the process of writing in the test and not to make you feel tense or very anxious that you can't finish your examination on time. Another thing would be to improve your written vocabulary. You know, you have to be a little bit more aware of what you're writing and you try to use a diverse vocabulary range so that um, you'd be able to, sh to, to show to the examiner that you have a little bit of a more advanced English capacity. Um, and that is usually done by making your um, vocabulary a little bit more varied. And what I mean by that is if you've used a word already, uh, don't try to use it again very closely to that uh, first usage because it will look as if you don't really have any other word in your arsenal or in uh, your memory bank when you're taking the test. So what you want to do is to space it out. If you've used that word once, then try to use it maybe you know a couple of paragraphs away from the first one. Okay, and also. Uh, I think it's very important to practice under timed conditions. I mean, initially, if you're just learning the ropes and trying to understand the test format, that won't be necessary. But towards the end of your preparation, it is critical that you can already finish your examination on time. Because uh, it's useless that you're able to generate a very uh, well written response if you can't finish it within the amount of time that will be provided for you during the test. Because if you have an unfinished response, regardless of how beautifully written everything is, you won't expect to get a desirable score in your examination. And did I say feedback is important? Yeah, it is super important because we cannot assess ourselves because we're blinded by our mistakes. <laughs> like if nobody is going to tell us, oh, this is wrong, then we won't notice it because in our head, everything is right. So it is actually going to be much uh, helpful for you to go and seek the advice of an expert. And here at 9.09, we have over 100 lecturers and coaches who can assist you in the process of preparing for your English test. You can provide um, accurate feedback on your writing so that you can improve it and uh, amend uh, your mistakes so that when you take the examination, you can preclude the incidence of uh, committing the same errors. What I've realized here in the Philippines is that we know how to pronounce various words um, out of assimilation. What I mean to say is we don't relearn really the proper pronunciation of words. Instead, of what we do is we try to copy how the word is pronounced based off, you know, the people that we have heard using that word. So, um, yeah, one of the best steps definitely is to um, improve your listening skills and, and your speaking skills at the same time, like a combo by watching native English speakers. And this will not only improve your oral comprehension, like your ability to understand uh, people in various accents, um, but at the same time also equip you with the correct way of delivering um, 
uh, sentences in English and at the same time improving your pronunciation. I have a lot of other things I'd want to talk about but maybe for another episode because we still have plenty of episodes to come and I'm sure you're going to enjoy the future episodes in which we're going to be talking about more of the strategies and the tips and the approaches that you can use to improve your um, other parts of the examination like your speaking test. I'm going to be talking about that in a future episode. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast and I promise to be releasing more of these episodes very soon. Uh, make sure to uh, follow us on our various media handles. And of course, support our podcast at 9.09 or so we can keep on creating content like this that's helpful for your English exam preparation. Once again, my name is Ryan. I shall see you again next week for another exciting episode. Bye for now.